few weeks ago, America was shocked by the news that we just heard from the television. A prominent woman with an 11-year-old daughter committed a suicide. Before she took her life, he wrote a letter. He said, my daughter, you know that I will always love you. Ask your father about this. And she committed a suicide by hanging herself. You know that person, right? Mm -hmm. Kate Spade. And the second one with a daughter, with 13-year-old daughter saying, Father, should your body be a temple of the living God? And this guy said, no, I make my body as a fun house. I can do whatever I want. And he committed suicide, leaving a 13-year-old daughter. And today, as we celebrated Father's Day, I will be zeroing on how our fathers express their love, taken from Proverbs 23, verse 24 to 25. Let me just read it again. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice, and he who begets a wise child will delight in him. Let your father and mother be glad, and let her who bore you rejoice. The Bible says that our children is our inheritance. Children could be a blessing and at the same time could be a problem in the family. If your kids or your child will grow up to be a loving, caring, God-fearing, then you are blessed of having that kind of child. But if your child is a problematic child, it will give you a lot of problems. It is a great thing to have children who are following the path of righteousness. Both their father and mother will be glad. Jennifer Langford, a developmental psychologist and professor of Duke University, did a 10-year research project founded by the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. And he study all the ways parents express love for their children around the world. I will only choose 10 because it's a lot. His uh, studies conducted all over the world. Here are some of the data she gathered by studying parent-child relationship in the United States, China, Colombia, Italy, Jordan, Kenya, Philippines, Thailand, and Sweden. The research showed a unique ways love expressed, here are some. In Sweden, he said, where parents and children have equal rights within the family, parents show their love by treating children as equals in terms of voicing their opinions and sharing in family decisions. If you are a father, would you allow your kids to make a decision running your families? And Kenya said parents demonstrate their love by being more controlling to their children's behavior. How about in the Philippines? In the Philippines, parents show their love by carrying out family obligation. It is always Tata's obligation to take care of the entire family. In Colombia, love is shown through placing the family's needs before their own individual needs. While in Jordan, they show their love by adjusting their behaviors, becoming stricter, more lenient, depending upon the situation that requires to promote the children's physical, emotional, mental, social, and spiritual health. Here in America, United States, parents often demonstrate love by promoting their children's individual interest and giving them freedom to make their own choices. Children, let me ask you today, this is your opportunity to stand up and speak. 
how does your father express his love for you? Can I have an answer from our children? How does your father express their love for you? Or do you want me to call? Who wants to volunteer? You have never experienced how did your parents express their love for you? I don't like to call Lolo Isoy. <laughs> but what about us children? Did you ever remember a time that your father expressed their love for you? No one? Okay. Yeah. Thank God. Thank you. Kuya George. You have a daughter who's so strong, so confident to say that you are a father who's very supportive. As for me, I don't remember at all that my father told me that he loves me. All I could remember when I was young, he would always put me in his shoulder. Because since our house is close to the shore, and if the weather is good, we just walk on that area. If the, the, the weather is, uh, the wave is so strong, sometimes my father would run after the waves. And I'm so happy. His expression of love is by hugging and putting me in his shoulder. It is just expressed in different ways. Now let's look at the authoritative word of God. Look at the Bible and see how fathers expressed their love. It says it's expressed through words of affirmation. There were two occasions where we hear the voice of God express His affirmation about His Son Jesus. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 17, this is right after Jesus was baptized in Jordan River by John the Baptist. And this is God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In Mark 9 verse 7, God said, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Our God, our heavenly father is a very affirming father. He models for us what the children need. And 1 John 3 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. God look at us and He calls us His daughters, His sons. This is not just a label, not just His creation, but God identifies us as one who truly belongs to Him. That's why He called us His own children adopted in the kingdom of God. Children, fathers, mothers, children needs to hear words of affirmation, a sense of belongings that they are loved and are special. When children feel that they are loved and cared for, there's a confidence that comes within. To all dads, are you giving your children the affirmation they need? Our research show that in every positive statement in an average home, there are 10 negatives or critical ones. That's sad to know. Just imagine if you don't have a close relationship with your children, if this is what is happening at home. What they are hearing from the parents are often negative and no positive affirmation. This is how your children will feel low self-esteem father and mother words are so powerful it can tear your children it, it, it can build them up so my advice coming from the word of god look for a creative ways to let your children feel that they are loved and that they are special Express word of appreciation and praise more rather than negative comments. Affirmation in both words and action is one way to let your children know 
they are accepted, loved, and supported. If they have a healthy self-esteem, it helps children how to react to disappointments, failures, and mistakes. How fathers express their love, not only through affirmation, but through provision. Verse from 1 Timothy 5, 8. If anyone does not provide for his own, especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Fathers, fathers are responsible to provide the necessities of life. They see to it that the family's basic needs are met. Providing material things alone is not an adequate expression of love. Just a reminder, don't ever use providing good things or giving everything, whatever your children want, as an excuse or substitute for your business at work. This, this is the common problems in the house when the father are always absent. We call it absenteeism father. Those father that working abroad. They thought that by giving everything that their children needs will bring them to a good life. No. But rather maintain a balance of providing for your family and spending quality time with them. A father's responsibility to provide your family and spend time, spend quality time with them. Let not giving all good things overshadow the importance of spending quality time with our children. They need more of your presence, rather all the good stuff that you are giving to them. All fathers, do you realize that if you always give everything your children want, especially if they are already in late adolescence, that is from age 18 to 21, the Bible says you are depriving them of one of the basic needs in life that they need to learn. Allow them to learn that when they want something, they need to work for it. To have the sense of fulfillment that comes when they get through their hard work. By doing that, you are teaching your children to be industrious and to be a good steward. Another thing, father express their love through discipline. Coming from Proverbs 19 verse 18, it says, Discipline your son while there is hope and do not desire his death. Something, especially in this country, that, all, that discipline is often associated with punishment. It is not. The problem lies in how parents are executing discipline. We have to look at the scripture and we have to follow because this is the basic standards of our living here on earth. Two kinds of discipline are mentioned in the Bible coming from Proverbs 19 verse 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. One is the two kinds of discipline. Number one is physical discipline. The rod indicates the inflection of pain. When you are disciplining your child, you don't have to use your palm. You have to use, he said, rod, or you have to use belt. Our hands is not used for spanking our kids. It is not created for that purpose, but rather for loving, for hugging, for touching. Some parents, they just do like this. No. Look at the scripture, the rod. It should not be our hands. That is a physical discipline. The second one is the verbal discipline. Another word for this is reproof. It is a verbal instruction that requires explanation and instruction. Not a tongue-lasting remarks that hurts your children's character. 
they must be told the error of their way and when and then directed to the right path i will just give you an example in telling your children if your children wants to go outside to play how would you say no how can you how would you say you cannot go outside but instead rather you say this my son my daughter you cannot go outside I know you want to play outside it is fun to play outside but at this time you cannot because I cannot watch you to keep you safe there's a lot of explanation that we are doing don't just use your rub your hands but you have to instruct our children so that they may understand what is right and what is wrong. What are some reminders that parents need to know about discipline? Disciplining your children. What are some reminders that we have to know about disciplining our children? Disciplining your children should start early in their lives. It says the longer you wait to begin the process, the more difficult it will become. There is a saying that you have to bend the twig while it is young because if it is old, you will just break the branch or the tree. According to Gary Easel, there are four stages in parenting. The first stage is disciplining from birth to age five. According to this man, this is a godly person that study the word of God and practice what he learned from the word of God. He said from birth to age five, it is when a father set the rules and draw the guidelines and say, son, daughters, my children, this is right and this is wrong. This is good and that is bad. If you don't do that, according to Gary Easel, that in the first five years, you probably won't be able to do it at all. The second stage is training. From age 6 to 12. Training time is when you are setting the example. You become the role model. You know that our children, they just watch us. Even putting our dress. They try to put on dress also. You have to teach them. You have to train them how to dress themselves up. It's training by modeling it to them and they are watching you. The third stage is coaching. Okay? In coaching, it is from age 13 to 19. During this phase, you are just the coach on the sideline. You are not playing their games. You are the coach. They allow them to play themselves. You may call a timeout or you may call somebody to substitute, but you are not playing with them. You are the coach. Allow them to fumble, allow them to stumble, allow them to commit the mistakes, but you have to coach them. Don't scold them in the middle of the people. It's a shame. Some children, they, they tremble when their parents are saying that in the midst of people. And the last stage is friendship. From age 20 through the rest of their life, you allow them as parents to become the person God created them to be. Okay? Why? At this age, you talk together. You walk together, you love together, and remember together. You allow them to act freely, but you are just guiding them. You know, children, remember this. When you were born, until you reach 80, your mother will always look at you as baby, as son, not an old person. I don't know why. Why? Because... They love us so much. Question, why is disciplining your children so important? Why is it so important to discipline our children? 
In Proverbs 22 verse 15, he says, To the third destruction. Why? Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod, look at the word again, the rod of discipline will remove it far from him. So what is the Bible is telling us? Discipline is about watching your child to see the direction in which they are going. But some children, they don't realize that when they are left by themselves, chances are they will do or make bad decisions that can produce pain and turmoil in their lives, which they will regret it later. By then, it will already be too late. An important reminders to parents, just remember this, you need to have a good relationship with your children. If you don't, your attempts of discipline will be perceived by your children as trying to control them. Not only to deter destruction, the reason for imposing the discipline towards our children is, look at Ephesians 6.1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And this is the only commandments were given to the children with a promise. Why? Because he said, your life will be good. You will, have, uh, you will have a good life and you will have success in life. That's the promise of the Lord. Children who are disciplined learns that there are boundaries that must not be crossed. Parents who don't teach their children to obey prepare them for a life out of steps with God's word. Why? If children will not submit to your authority as parents, how will they obey God's authority? Think about that. However, both physical and verbal discipline must be kept in balance. It is important for parents to distinguish between childish irresponsibility and behavior that is willfully disobedient whether you are to give physical discipline or just verbal discipline. How fathers express their love through modeling. This is a very common verse that we are always reading to our children. He said in Proverbs 22, verse 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Question. Does the Bible promise that godly parenting will always result in godly children? Bringing up your children in the training and instruction of the Lord from childhood increases a likelihood that children will hold to Christ in latter life, just like the case of Timothy in which he was raised by both a mother and grandmother, Louise and Eunice. A father who loves his family will do his very best to lead them in the way of the Lord bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Do you understand the importance of other place in the upbringing of children? Godly parents is a child's best guide to God. Although it is both parents' responsibility, but the one primary, primarily responsible for their child moral and spiritual care belongs to the father because he is the spiritual head of the family you were given the task to lead your family even in building your own family altar it should be the father not the mother it was given to us men children don't respect parents who preach at them I heard pastor preach this morning. Dad, ma'am, stop preaching at me. I'm so tired of listening. But respect parents who model the truth they talk about. 
fathers and mother, if you don't practice what you preach, then your children are confused. If you expect them to be patient with you, you need to be patient with them. If you expect them to forgive you for the times you failed them, then you need to forgive them for their failures. Are your children getting the wisdom and direction need to live a God life? Nonetheless, by bringing up in the training and instruction of the Lord. What is the difference between training and instruction of the Lord? Have you ever distinguished the two? The difference between training and instruction? Training focuses on development of godly character and life. While instruction focuses on establishing God's truth by renewing of the mind. These are the principles of God's word that you have read, learned, and must be lived out in our own lives first before you tell them to your children. You can tell them you need to read the Bible and you yourselves are not reading. You cannot say to your children, pray pray and they have never seen you having a family altar leading your own family to a prayer meeting if they are not seeing you what you are doing they will not obey you you cannot build a spiritually strong family by just coming to church you cannot build a strong spiritual foundation even you have all the activities in the church no to all dads, if you want to build a strong family, then your children need to see ongoing evidence that God is a daily part of your lives. Take every opportunity to share and teach God's word to them. Will you be able to say to your children, just like the Apostle Paul, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. The task of human father is to be for his children an image of the Father in heaven. And lastly, fathers also express their love by leaving a legacy of salvation. Look at the Gospel of Mark, Mark 8, 36. It says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Fatherhood is more than a responsibility. It leaves a legacy. The best expression of love from a daddy is the legacy of salvation, not great wealth. There is no greater inheritance than the legacy of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. A father leaves to their children. It will not only save their lives for the present, but also procure for themselves great riches in heaven. Remember this, our soul is our most valuable possession. Let us be more concerned about our soul's security than the security of our material wealth. You are investing so much on saving money for the future of your children. That is, There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. But what is the word of God is saying? Focus more on the salvation of the soul of your children. It is your duty. It is our responsibility as a community of believers. I will give you an illustration in 1 Chronicles 28 verse 9. This is when King David was in his deathbed. He's about to die. He said to his son Solomon, As for you, my son, Know the God of your father and serve him with loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intents of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Coming from the man after God's own heart. My challenge not only to fathers, 
but to both parents. How sure are you of your children's salvation? How sure are we about the salvation of our children? Father and mother, are you keeping track? Praying regularly for your children and doing everything to ensure that their Christianity is not a mere religion. They might be coming here for the rest of their life, but because it is only a duty, they have no personal relationship with Jesus. It is our responsibility, father and mother, keep track about the salvation of our children. How will you know? That's the next question. How do we know that our kids is safe and they have the personal relationship with the Lord Jesus? You can see them. Are they desiring God's word or are they just being obligated to? Is your home a place where God's word is both taught and lived out? In closing, being a Father's Day today, I'd like to thank all the daddies, the papi, the tatay, everything for striving to be the best dad you can be. Some they call it papsi. Some they call it dada. No matter how you name it, fatherhood is the most important job God has given to you. It is a lifelong journey, a lifetime calling. There will be many ups and downs. It is just in this journey you will need your wife to help you in assuming your parenting responsibility to raise godly children in this godless society. This is what you are called to do as Christian fathers. I just want to leave this reminder to you. Children strive or children succeed when they have a father who is involved in the lives of their children. Be a father who takes every opportunity you can make to make sure your children live their faith in God. Father, be a father who loves, who guides and protects your family. My prayer to all fathers that are here today is that all your children will grow up to be a committed disciples of Jesus Christ. Not only accept the Bible as truth, but also lives its principle and continually deepen the relationship with God. To all the children that are here today, you know what will bring great joy to your dad? It is not about the gift <coughs> that you have given them. The greater joy that they can ever have in this world is that you confess that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior and that you are walking in truth.